Ah, your children. They're cute, they say funny things. Then, before you know it, they're all grown up and ready to fly the nest, starting a life of their own. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. Stop acting like a spoiled brat! Well, they are a spoiled brat! In these recession-riddled times, it's harder than ever for young people to get a job. So what chance do these reprobates have of standing on their own two feet? <laughs> Mom! This lot are selfish. You give me money, so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Sponging. Give me a change. Lazy. You don't earn that yet, have you? Jack, I've just earned it. And completely useless. I don't know how to use the washing machine, the microwave, the dryer. So I can lick my elbow. Their parents are sick and tired of waiting for them to grow up and move out. But they've only got themselves to blame. Race has been one of my biggest mistakes in life. I'm ashamed of myself, really. And I've kind of reached a point where I can't do it anymore. So they're finally kicking them out and forcing them to run their own home. Not one bit of food in the house. No, we've got our sheets, pillows, oh my God. everything. I know this isn't prison, but they're doing better off in there than we are here. They're going to be made to get jobs like the rest of us. When you finish socialising, you want to do some work. Let me know when you're, it's convenient for you, you know what I mean? I've never seen such a negative group. It's just such a negative attitude. Okay. No, no, cos I'm meant to be head chef. It kind of makes you despair for humanity sometimes, seeing people like this. It's all under the watchful gaze of their own parents, who will judge their progress. I just fall there and like spoiled brats, every one of them. And each week, the most useless gets the loot. <laughs> At stake, the prize of a round the world trip. <laughs> Will a month of independent living finally make them grow up? We can't live with animals. This I is who we are. Mac in the face. Oh, I ate that. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be. Or will they remain young, dumb, and living off mum? I like food, though. Last week, our eight young dumbers moved in together with the aim of proving to their parents they could live like responsible animals. Amazingly, it turned out they couldn't. <laughs> Someone help me, please. Instead, they spent the week <laughs> drinking, <laughs> wrecking their new home, <laughs> and rowing. Don't fucking dare. None of us like you, so fuck off. Throw a smack in the face. I'll oh, go on, then, you stupid bitch. Oh, I ate her. And things didn't get any better when they officially went to work for the first time ever at a youth hostel. It started badly it was one the and went down the pan from there. Now, one going to take this long, we're not going to get anything done. <laughs> Do you really think the fact that you couldn't make 30 sandwiches between two of you was a laughing matter? <laughs> Keep laughing, boys. We're saying it up, yeah. OK? Watching everything unfold is their parents. It's their job to decide who least deserves to stay each week. And after failing to impress at work, as well as upsetting everyone with controversial opinions. Mm. Like, I literally am totally against, like, two guys having a kid. Every okay, single kid needs a mother. I am totally against it. It was 18-year-old pampered daddy's girl Sophie who got the boot. I'm planning around the world trip myself. I just need to go, Daddy, <laughs> please, and I'll get it. And then there were seven. 20-year-old no-nonsense Gracie. I don't get on with girls because girls are bitches. Jack, the ladies' man, who's 19. Right, pretty step back. Just over 50 girls, so there's not too many. It'd be achievement to go out not to get a girl. I honestly think that'd be more of an achievement. Princess Jade, who's 18. I told you where they were! I they told you exactly what they want! They want. They I don't care, Mum! <laughs> Deep thinker, 19-year-old Tom. I would love to be reincarnated as a cat. Play around, sleep, eat food. What's not to love about that? Ruby Joe, the hell-raising party girl who's 18. If I don't get my own way, all hell will break loose. Stop acting like a spoiled brat! Well, they are a spoiled brat! 18-year-old Ryan, who's a budding economist. They complain that there's a limited amount of money, 
So why don't they just print more of off and just give it to everyone? And then everyone can be rich and make themselves pretty. And 20-year-old mummy's boy, Enzo. I am spoiled. Um, I'm wrapped up in cotton wool. I'm not going to move out to get independence. I've got independence now, so I'm right, right here. Counting. <laughs> So far, this lot have shown no desire to grow up and start acting their age. But will some good old-fashioned hard work in a fish market be the kick up the backside they so desperately need? Don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the bag. Label stuck on. On the blow. Take it away. No. It's unlikely. It's approaching the end of day four, and delighted with the departure of opinionated Sophie, the group are pulling out the stops to prepare a celebratory meal. I've never cooked a fight before, but I did, um, I did bacon sandwiches yesterday, so I'll, I'll learn how to cook them. Using classic young, dumb ingenuity, dinner is served. I am it's the back of a cornflakes uh, box, because all the plates in the dishwasher, so that was my uh, dinner. No night is complete without an alcoholic beverage. But with their weekly budget all spent, they haven't got any. So Ruby, Joe and Ryan revert to their natural survival instincts. No fags, no beer or anything, no money in the house, so we thought we might as well try our luck with asking for an IOU from the shop. So, so she, she's boosted herself up, yeah. we're, we're, we're wearing a nice Everyone said a bit of cleavage, it might help, so... Yep. Gonna, yep. gonna, gonna flash a bit of boob. Well, the thing is, we've ran out of money, so I was wondering, right, because we get our, we get our m weekly money tomorrow, mm -hmm. if we could just have some cigarettes till tomorrow and we bring the money back. Could we be really okay, cheeky, yeah. right? Could we be really cheeky and have a, a small bottle of vodka till tomorrow as well? Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. I can't wait to go to the animal. Let's go to the Yeah. Quick. And then I got 25. And I'm all back This is like the best day ever. Like, we get vodka and fags. <laughs> so feeling. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, could, could we have had to ask for a better day? It's late, and tomorrow they'll find out what their next work assignment is. And in this hopeless household, what better way to prepare than to get out the makeup and pretend to be cats? I actually look like a leopard. <laughs> After hours of role-play, drinking and shouting, it's no surprise their attention-seeking behaviour has attracted attention. There's no one there. Funnily enough, a disgruntled neighbour tells them to keep the noise down. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got lots of viewers. Look, we've even looking everywhere. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. You know what, they all rage to get up. <laughs> it's a fair request at midnight. Anyone reasonable would understand. Just a shame there's no one reasonable living in the house. <laughs> it's morning, and while most of the kids are getting used to life in the young dumb house... I love it here. It's been well good. Mummy's boy Enzo has awoken feeling homesick. Really homesick. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be for me. <laughs> Just to leave my family. Understandable when you consider he's been away for almost a full week now. I'm coming home. 20-year-old Enzo has rarely left the comfort blanket of home. The longest period of time I've ever been away from my parents was when I went to New York with my brother, and I think that was for four to five days. And why would he want to when his doting mum does everything for him, much to the annoyance of his father? I still call him a spoiled old brat, and I think that he really should wake up to reality. If waking up to reality involves a bit of self-indulgent boo-hooing, then this experience has been a huge success. I feel so far away from home because I don't know where I am. And nothing around here is familiar to me. There, there, Enzo. There's no need to suffer alone. 
unaware of Enzo's distress. The rest of the gang get ready for the weekly household shop. After Ruby Joe has a shave, obviously. There's nothing in the house. We virtually have got water. That is actually, we've got no tubes, no cereal, no milk, no bread. Um, yeah, so we need our money. We've only got water. I don't think we need squash now. During their time in the house, they will be given the same as everyone else their age on Job Seekers Allowance. Just over £7 a day each. We're ready to go shopping. Right, come on, let's go. After Ruby Jo has paid off her IOU from the night before, they all head to the supermarket to buy some household essentials. You getting fruit and veg or not? Nah. With fruit and veg off the menu, maybe they'll stock up on food they can cook from scratch. Or maybe not. Meal for four, five pounds. Sausage rolls, one fifty nine. I'm not really keen on the idea of mushrooms. So, what are they going to buy then? I love crisps. I don't really eat anything else apart from crisps. That's why I've always got ulcers and my tongue's always swollen. Yeah, that's the price you pay, Ruby Joe. Transformers, Doritos, Quavers, Watsits, Walkers, Cheesy Puffs. Cheese curls, squares, monster munch, salted fries. For £5, we've got 42 bags of crisps, so it should last a little while. Yes, that lot should keep Ruby Joe happy for almost an hour. Um, we've got a bottle of Sainsbury's Triple Distilled Vodka, and it's £20.18, and it's got 56.3 um, units. For Gracie, it's all about the simple pleasures. A pot noodle. I wanted to treat myself. £69.89. <laughs> but will spending £70 on what is essentially crisps and vodka impress the parents? Basically, um, I was really bored at first, like, should I say boring? But as we went along and we got to the alcohol part, I kind of got really excited and then after that I liked shopping. So I've changed my mind on shopping now. Shopping raw. I think we're going to be living off pasta, noodles, um, sausage rolls, but it's all right, so we've got this to keep us company. <laughs> the Young Dumb Total Health and Wellness Diet starts here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't kill them, because tomorrow morning, the group will be thrown into the world of work for the second time. Whoever's the most useless will be sent packing. And it's their very own parents who will be watching and deciding who goes. I was disappointed in her today. I thought she could have done a lot better. During this experience, the kid who's grown up the most and proven they can live independently will win a round-the-world trip. The parents take it in turns to pick a job for their big babies. This week, Ryan's mum, Natasha, is setting the challenge. I do worry for Ryan because, you know, obviously he doesn't work. He's 18 now, he's, you know, he's getting older, you know, next he's going to be in his 20s and then 30s and I think, you know, in his 30s is he still going to be living at home. Having worked all her life, she knows that getting a job is an important part of growing up, something her son has failed to grasp yet. Your mum's Tomorrow, nice, though. you will be working with fish market traders. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, you knew it! I knew it! I told you! I hate you! It's an early start. Must be ready to leave the house at quarter to one in the morning. <laughs> News of the job sparks a lively fish-themed debate. I think if someone came up to me, like, could I have a mackerel, I'd end up giving them a cod or something. I don't know, they all look the Probably. same. I like tuna, but I've never seen it, like, without being in a tin. Oh, yeah, no tuna. It's well, like that shape. Tuna fish. Square. The word fish in the sea are crabs. I'm scared of them. They've got all those pointy legs and little twiggy things. And... But fact of the day goes to Gracie. Do you know that if you dip a crab in a beer, then they walk straight. If you, if you, you really do learn something new every day. That's weird. They'll be leaving for their task in a matter of hours. So naturally, our young dumbers concentrate on two very important things. 
vodka and dancing. Because we planned to get drunk before we knew what our, our place, was, like our workplace was, that we all didn't want to not get drunk because we was all in the mood to get drunk. I think this is the drunkest everyone's been together because usually there's like half the people drunk, half the people sober, or you know, the like opposite way around, like half the people sober, half the people drunk. <laughs> Still homesick, Enzo. We should do the choreography for Pussy Guy Dolls. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at Ruby, Jack, dig it, dig it. The Young Dumb Fame Academy continues until the booze runs out and wears off. And it's a good job it does because their shift at the fish market starts very soon. I'm shattered. I'm so tired. It's about one o'clock in the morning. And we've got to leave to go to work. It's not the dream, that's for sure. It's 2 a.m. at Billingsgate Market in East London and the start of a long night's work. The gang will be split into three groups. Gracie and Tom, Jack, Ryan and Jade, and Enzo and Ruby Joe. First, they must get to know the fish and set up their stalls. Second, they must serve and take orders from customers and local businesses. Come on, Ryan. Finally, they'll prepare an order and hand deliver it to a location in London. The parents will be watching everything they do later in the week, so they need to show they're up to the job. With no sleep, how will they cope with the pressure of working in a busy fish market? Good morning and welcome to Billingsgate. I'm Lee, this is Roger and this is Russell. We're going to be your mentors for the day. Today you're here at one of the largest inland fish markets around. And we need you to be on the ball today. Hope you're all up for it, hope you're ready for it. 90% of life is common sense. So you've got to move your arse and you've got to show me plenty of common sense. Billingsgate is the UK's largest inland fish market, selling 250,000 tonnes of fish a year and producing an annual turnover of £2 million. To work in the sales trade, you need to be good at maths. I've actually re-sat and fouled my maths GCSE three times now. You need to be good with people. I think you're stuck up, rude and a really big bitch. And willing to work hard. I don't think I should go to work now. I just think it's boring and pointless. Considering our little darling's work ethic, qualifications and people skills, they should take to this job like a duct of water. Come on, Grace, so you get your boots on. Yeah, come I'm on, we've got... I'm coming, OK, one thing you don't do, hands are strictly not in pockets at any time. It smells disgusting, though. Ugh, I there's no crabs, I'm scared of crabs. <laughs> Ready as they'll ever be, the three groups head off to get started. Jack, Jade and Ryan, Tom Snow. Gracie and Tom. Strong, isn't it? And Ruby, Joe and Enzo. Right, come on the stand. Gracie, Tom, yeah. all right? Yeah. Don't think about the smell. Not thinking anyway, about it. You want no. a picture. Do we get gloves? You get no gloves. I can't touch them fish. I can't, I can't touch actually fish with no gloves on. On the other side of the market, Jade, Ryan and Jack are about to meet a variety of sea creatures. Right. I so say that's just salmon. This middle bit here will be all wet fish, so like monkfish, halibut, place. And then my bit here is all like the exotic stuff. So you've got like blue crabs, tuna. Oh, I don't like crabs. Can I do something? They're dead, they're dead, they're dead. He hasn't even been here five minutes, and Ryan is already having to face his crab phobia. <laughs> I don't like crabs. This bodes well. Ryan's not the only one getting to know the merchandise they'll be selling later on. Lemon sole, right? Okay. Best way to pick it up, straight in the gill, pick it up like that, sorted. Gone. Just pick it up, Gracie. Don't be a baby. Oh, I'm holding it. I'm Go on, pick it up, pick it up. Let me have a look, show me it. Very nice. <laughs> Put it back. Right. While Gracie bonds with her new soul mate, Ruby Jo yeah, is struggling to find her now. feet. This is a business. Okay. This is you're now going to be in the real world. Good girl. Now that's called haddock. It's lovely. This is called mum. Look at the spine. Looks like a piranha. Well, it's, you feel it. Feel it for a second. Now, look, you've got to get into it. Come on, now, Ruby, don't be frightened. Ah! Oh, Ruby, don't act like a silly cow. The best way to pick up the bass, in their eyes. All right, it's dead. It ain't going to hurt you. No. I've got really long nails. I can't Beautiful. Up the Come on, let's have a look. Just try it. There you are. Ah! Nothing to it, really, is it? No. All right. I don't like it. Can I put it down? There, nice conga. 
Can you hold it for me, Ruby? Enzo, come on, you do it. You can do it. Come on, Enzo. Show me what kind of man you are. Hold it up, Enzo. Hold it up. That's my boy. Now you can do it. Good boy, Enzo. That was awful. That picking that thing up was awful, man. I, had, I felt it skull. I'm usually partying at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Friday, not picking up fish by the eyeballs. Grass cut, grass cut, hey. Unlike Gracie, Jade has made a good start. Flatfish. And is already on first name terms with her fish. What's this one? Seabree. Seabree, yeah, this one? This one's Seabree, that one's bass. Yeah. Something that will help her sell them when the customers flock in later. While Jade is taking an interest, next door, Jack is finding it hard to keep awake. Right. Orange grouper. Orange grouper. Orange grouper, or <laughs> people from the West Indies, they call it strawberry grouper or butter fish. Fish have different names. Come on, concentrate. Come Kingfish. Yeah. In America, wahoo. In India, seafish. OK. Am I boring you? No, it's Am just, I no, you? no, it's really interesting. If I'm boring, you tell me, because I can find you plenty of other jobs to do. You know no, no, I mean? no, no, it's, it's really intriguing. Right, it's going to be a long day, Russ, it's going to be a long day. So far, Ryan hasn't had to get up close and personal because his fish have been safely hidden away in packets. I don't even know what it is. I can't remember if it's head off. But unfortunately for him, he's about to be faced with his biggest nightmare. A nasty case of crabs. No, I've got a phobia. If you put the nomi, I'm just walking out. I don't like crabs, I don't like spiders. Most people have got a phobia, some people don't like heights. I don't like crabs and spiders. So I'm, I'm not going back in. I'm not working with a whole man like that. Opening hours upon them, Ryan's boss can't afford to be a man down. Didn't know you had a problem with crabs, all right? OK, put my hands up. Won't be seeing any more crabs, OK? But I need you back there, all right? So he'll say anything to get him back in. Back inside, Enzo and Ruby Joe are presenting the fish for their stall, and they're managing to impress Roger the boss. OK. Oh, lovely. Yeah, that's very, very good. good. Well done. That's very no, good. No, I thought I'd colour coordinate. Yeah, you've done that well. That's OK. That's present. That's good. That's pretty good. You obviously do present because your fingernails, you're artistically minded. Yeah, from fish to nails, I, I, it's still, presentation is still important. Presentation is present, correct. Yeah. Back home in Stockport, and presentation is the last thing on Ruby Joe's mind. Her poor sister has to share a room with her disgustingly messy sibling. She's lazy. I have to tidy the bedroom because she thinks that she doesn't have to do it. That's why it's such a mess. Mum! Have you seen the other sheet to this? That one. Ruby Joe can't even manage to flush the toilet. Can you remember to flush the toilet, please? I'm sick of asking you. It don't really take much to, for my mum to flush the toilet, does it? Hygiene hazard Ruby Joe seems to have cleaned up her act for now. Still recovering from Crabgate, Ryan's having a hard time packing up his orders. We're out of steaks, yes, Mr. Smith. Come on, Ryan. I am trying my hardest. You've got a few years on me, mate. Yeah, I am trying my hardest. For us, don't like when I first yeah, started, it's a lot harder than this. No, it's my first day. Oh, uh, well, yeah, but you come on. Yeah, well, it's my first day. Make sure you work hardest. with me. Right, back in the bag. Label stuck on, on the blue. Take it away. No. Come on, Ryan. I feel like crying, it's been horrible to me. It's my first day, I've never done it before. After yawning his way through his fish briefing, Jack's been given the simple task of stacking boxes of pre-ordered fish. We'll do another four, yeah? This time, I want you to make a conservative effort to do them a bit better. All right? I mean, that, that ain't good, is it? If that was a Christmas present, you'd throw it back at your mum, wouldn't you? But I wouldn't get fish for Christmas. So that looks like a sack, doesn't it? That looks horrible, doesn't it? If you was buying them, you'd be impressed, would you? So what I want you to do is think about what you're doing, tape it up one end, then spin them round, and then tape them up the other end, OK? You've got four hours to do an eight-hour day, and in that four hours, you've got to work. If you don't do the orders, customers will leave you alone, so he's got to work and work hard. 
No, I never want to do this job. It's, I couldn't work this time. I, I should be at my friend's. It's 10 past four in the morning, or I should be in bed with someone. Back home, Jack's nights out are less about fish, more about getting battered. I'm really successful with the ladies, you know, I've sat with numerous girls, obviously. Um, to be honest, I've only got two sets of hands to count them on. And these lucky ladies are all over him. I have Hannah, and then I have Shara tattooed there, which is my first girlfriend. This Bristolian Lothario likes all of the women in his life to be at his beck and call, and that includes his mother. Boom idol. Lazy, arrogant, <laughs> full of himself. That's it, really. You haven't ironed that yet, have you? Jack, I've just ironed it. <sighs> God, where's my shirt? Where's my under t shirt? Oh, you want under t shirt? You haven't put oh. an under t shirt. Is it any wonder Jack is struggling when he has everything done for him at home? Do you get tea? Yes, I get breakfast. Forget tea, forget breakfast, that ain't happening. You're not home with your mum now, you're with me. Okay, yeah, you look like Mum's mum. miles away, I'm your mother. And I'm going to be the worst mother you've ever had. Right, yeah. well. right, let's do some more. Come on. Um, if he wants a job, he's got to buckle down, he's got to impress me. I had to do it, he's got to do it the same way. With the parents watching and judging everything they do at the end of the week, he really needs to get a move on. It's 5am, three hours into their night shift, and things are about to go up a gear. Does that mean dinner time? That bell indicates that the trading can start between the traders, and then all hell of it let loose. Now, I want you to do, you're gonna sell. Sell, sell, sell. Because everything we sell, we haven't got ice up. Let the selling commence. Everyone must sell as much as they can to other fish traders. This is where the big money can change hands. The pressure is on. Jack and Ryan have struggled from the start. Whereas Jade, Tom and Gracie are starting to get the hang of things. And as for Enzo, he might be missing mummy, but he's no wet fish when it comes to selling. That's my first sale, and I was sold uh, shrimp, and it come to £23. This kid's got chances. He'll go places. He's keen, he's hungry. And you're changed. Unfortunately, Enzo's teammate Ruby Joe can't get her head round the price and the weights, which is slowing down sales. I've never been so confused in my life. It's just shouting and, like, everyone speaks in fish language. Do you want them in a box or a bag? Uh, 1.65. Um, one second. This is my first day. Something to say, say the price. And other ones don't say the price. And they shouted so quick. And he's on the phone and then he's writing it down and then he's doing a million and one things. I think it's hard, actually. Back with Jack, and he's working hard on chatting and skiving. Do you work out? I come in to buy fish, that's all. What, what, I know what, why do you shop at this type of morning? I don't understand. My shop is in New Wembley. When you finish socialising, you want to do some work? Uh, go on. <laughs> Let me know when you're, it's convenient for you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Give me five minutes and I'll... Five minutes and Jake over here. That one in the scale with that one, right? Yeah. Stand there, he was nice, I like you. And you've got to do three things at once, and he's finding out to do one thing at once. That's the problem. But I personally wouldn't employ him, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor old Ruby Joe is starting to crack under pressure. Ruby! Come on, don't stand there like a schmuck. Well, you haven't told me what to well, do. come on, babe. Get a box. So stupid. She's more worried about her bloody finger now. So she's my fish. She will have to worry about fish. This is her job for the day. So I'm afraid to say the finger now is going to have to go out the window. What's wrong? Okay. That's all right. Calm down. Why don't you, um... You don't even tell you what to do. He's all bossy. Oh, come here. Come here. It's all right. Listen, just calm down. It's like... I was confused as well. Just take it. They just shout out of it again, think you know what you're doing. We don't get upset. Yeah, but I'm not a fish expert. Well, don't matter. Listen, you whatever you do, it. don't get upset. Now, don't yeah, worry about it. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know you don't. That's why it's hard. Blue, answer the phone, Bobby. That's a good girl. Good morning, Bart and Good morning, Bart and Good girl. What have you got? Well, 8.15. 8.15. Take them with you. Yeah, Roger. Okay. Might as well just answer the okay, phone. Yeah. Hey, look, Nobody wants to speak to me on the phone. Who is it, babe? I don't know. Hello? 
This is harder than cleaning the shit out of the toilet. Hello? Yes? But you mustn't get upset about it. It takes time. You can't expect to come into a job and do it well, within minutes. Well, doing a great job. You... Okay, it's £26, please. £26. Cool. Would you like a receipt? Easy job. Straighten the money up before we put it in hundreds. Could you do that? Yeah. Good girl, now, come on. Don't get down. Just as she's finally Morning, making buddy. herself useful, something truly terrible happens. Oh, no! Oh, no, I broke the nail! I broke a nail. After the crap incident, Ryan still hasn't come out of his shell and is falling behind in packing his pre-orders of salmon. You get lost, you can transfer that over there, please. Thank you very much. Come on. Yep. Look lively. We've got a lot of work to do. I'm not a hard man, but there's times when you've got to turn the screw. You hurry along now. Come on, we're falling behind. I know it's his first day, but he's got to get faster. The emphasis is on time, speed, get the order out. Customers are going to be disappointed. I'm going to get it in the neck. I'm not carrying him. He's got to be up to speed. I'm all right, but he keeps saying that I'm not pulling my weight and stuff like that. But I'm trying my hardest. I can't be as fast as everybody else who works here who's been working here for, like, 20 years or so. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, and after six hours of cleaning, setting up their stalls and selling fish, it's time for the Dummer's final assignment. Five fish bass and five fish four to six gill head gill. Each group is given an order that they must weigh, pack up and then deliver by hand to a local restaurant. Now, I need you to go straight there, right, because obviously you've only got a certain time to get there. We don't want it obviously melting and spoiling the temperature. If they deliver a wrong order, pack it incorrectly or even let the ice melt, then the fish could be sent back, something their bosses would not be best pleased about. Here is a mat. OK. Yes, and you will find the instructions on here, and this is where you'll find the answers. Shit, it's really far. Mm. It's really, really far. I'm not giving up, so. That's the spirit. They haven't yet left the car park. It's called Plateau. Right, it's not in the map. Why give us a map when it's not in there? They head off in their three groups. Jack, Jade and Ryan, Ruby, Joe and Enzo, and Gracie and Tom. My arm's just hurt. <laughs> Can it be here? There's nothing here. The three restaurants are a stone's throw away from Billingsgate. This part of the task should be a walk in the park. What the hell is this place? It's Canary Wolf. I've never heard of it. But this new world is proving alien for Ruby Joe. This reminds you like of a futuristic world. <laughs> I've never been anywhere like this in my life. Put yourself in here, tuck yourself in. Oh my god. The water's dripping like mad. Jade, Ryan and Jack have managed to find their building and they've been told to go to the fourth floor restaurant. First floor, street level first, second. Second? Is this Is for real? Oh, hang on. Restaurant oh, the park, just opposite left. Still oh. Oh. What's she saying? Oh, do you know what? Just press three and we'll walk up one flight of stairs. But the lift is broken, the ice is now melting, and the fish could go off if they don't figure out a plan. This is a joke. This is, this is honestly a joke. <laughs> the lift next door is working, but our hopeless trio fail to spot it and head for the stairs instead. Does anyone know where the stairs are? High-five and a hug, mate. Yay! We, we found, found Gracie it. and Tom are congratulating each other for taking 45 minutes to find a restaurant that's round the corner. Whoa. But, hey, small victories, okay. right, guys? Let me just weigh it for you, yeah? But if the chef's not happy with the fish, he'll send it back to Billingsgate to an unhappy boss. Yeah, temperature's fine. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So they're the first group to succeed. Having less luck are Jade, Jack and Ryan, who are still trying to find the fourth floor. At least they found their building, though, unlike Ruby, Joe and Enzo, who are now lost. Do you know where the first edition restaurant is? OK, all about 25... We'll find it on our own, come on! All right. Cheers. Why don't you want to stop off for directions? No, we'll find it on our own. Yeah, good luck with that one. The ice is melting, it's getting wet. Oh, no. Wait, 25! Get in! 
Oh, my God. Wait. 25. <laughs> they found it. Oh, no, they haven't. Wrong way. Go down the right. Bruce, that's it. Yay. Oh. Go on, guys. Uh, we have a delivery of fish. fish man, Where's yeah. one in here? Oh, you're right, next to you. <laughs> yeah, that's 400 gram each. So that's, super, that's oh. good, yeah. Super. Great. OK. Having completed their task, Ruby, Joe and Enzo head back to Billingsgate. Success. We're awesome so successful. It may have taken an age, but Ryan, Jade and Jack have finally found the fourth floor. I'm not joking. Oh, really? Honestly, I'm not joking. Not but have no access to the restaurant from the stairwell. Delivery for Clapton. Restaurant. <laughs> you want fish? <laughs> Lots of it and it's heavy. Hello! Thank you. Right, I can put it well. After nearly knocking the door down, Jade, Jack, and Ryan head downstairs and spot a working lift, the one that was there all along. Hopefully, this one likes fingers crossed. Yes. yes! I think that should give a rat size. Yeah. Have they got there in time? Hi, we're here to speak to the chef. Hiya, we've received your order. OK, bring it through. Have you counted them? Yeah. I think there's, I think there's six bags. Yeah, six bags to play with the other fish. Because, um, you were talking about... I ordered five, OK? Three. OK. Four, five, six, six seven, eight, nine. Someone hasn't done their maths. So okay. I'll keep five. You take four back. Yeah. And I need a credit for those. And these are these are what? Bream. I norm, normally use uh, gilt head bream. These are emperor bream. So these are the wrong ones as well, so you're going to have to take these back. It's a lovely fish, but it's not the fish we use at no, Pato, so... Bye. So Bye. We are now. That didn't go well, did it? How did we end up thinking that we needed four to 600 amount of fish and it yeah, was I didn't five get fish? It. We're didn't not get that it. stupid. Look, four to 600 on both. But then that's a five. But it's confusing. The bewildered yeah. bunch head back to Billingsgate to face their boss. Ahead of them are Gracie and Tom. Hello. Hi. All right, guys. Yeah. How did we do? Brilliant. Yeah. Fish. We delivered the fish, and he said everything was perfect. Yeah. He weighed it. He checked the temperature. He checked everything. Yeah. Said it's perfect. And he was happy. Very yeah. happy. Well done. I was uh, done very well today. How did you get on? We found it. Found it. it. Well done. Well done, the pair of you. Well done. Makes you feel good. Yeah, he said it was does. perfect. Did he? he, he yeah. perfect. Well, there you are. The best part of the day for me was getting myself back together and getting myself back in there instead of just giving up. Because I'm, I'm, I, I usually just give up and think, what the hell, what's the point? While two of the bosses are happy, Ryan, Jade and Jack's boss is a little peeved. The chef has called him to complain about the order. Yeah, well, I've been told you did ten sea bass not five. I thought it was nine. It was nine. Nine. And the Emperor Bream, they were in your shop all morning, which, and they were actually stacked right next to those ones, so they're quite clearly on show. But he wasn't very happy with the order. He wasn't very happy with me. You know, if I did that too many times, I would lose the order with the restaurant. So, not that impressed. All right? OK, you want to pack the fish away? We'll put it back in the chill and uh, save it for another day. Yeah. Cheers. Slept in 24 hours and I smell a bloat of horrible fish. Yeah, we feel rough. We feel like meshes. So, with a long night of work over, the knackered group goes straight to bed. Oh, that feels so nice. Where they remain for the rest of the day and night. The next morning, still high from her work buzz, Ruby Jo is on a mission. I had a really good idea, right? Because, like, we sit around the house all day, do nothing. 
Why don't we go to the job centre and look for jobs? The what? The, am I hearing this right? The job centre? Uh, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Oh, I know. OK. I know. Stupid, I'm saying it. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a good idea, yeah. But Gracie begs to differ. And the guy's job said it's a massive waste of time. Even if you were to get a shift, you'd have to wait a month to get paid for it. Yeah. Now, the best thing you can do is walk along that high street and ask for jobs. The fact is, I've never been to a job centre, so, so when I get home, I know how it works and what to do. And I, personally, for myself, I want to apply for a job, see if I'd actually get one. But I've never applied. Well, I think if anything, we should do with cleaning before we go to a job centre. While Ruby, Joe and Gracie discuss the merits of going to the job centre, Enzo has got another plan all of his own. Today I'm going to leave the house, is what I've planned. Why is that? I feel like I've proved everything I need to prove so in this house. Not like these lot talking about going out and getting a job. I mean, that's cool if they want to earn a bit more money, but I want to go out in the real world and actually sort my life out and get a job in my life. Amazing. After 20 years of being mollycoddled by your mother, it's taken just a few days in the house and some work experience to sort your life out. Enzo gathers the group for a grand <laughs> meeting of the dumb. I don't really care. If I'm meant to go, then I'll go. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I've been in the house, what is it, today's seventh day or whatever it is, yeah? And I've proved myself on both the tasks, and I've changed from what I was like outside the house. I've changed everything I wanted to change within this week. And that's exactly where you want to go. And I don't think there's anything that I've learned in this week that I'm going to learn any more. I don't see that. Leaving is not a good idea because then you, that's, that thought is always going to be in the back of your mind. What if I'd have stayed there and won? Well, so you're always thinking about people. Yeah. With the advice of his housemates still ringing in his ears, Enzo decides to think it over. Ruby, accompanied by Jade, Ryan, Tom, and Jack, head off in search of a job centre. Gracie, who thinks they're barking up the wrong tree, stays at home with Enzo to clean up the mess they've all made. It's no. Elimination tomorrow. It's short. No. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? That is. Is it closed on a Saturday? <laughs> Not wanting to admit defeat, they decide to play a trick on Gracie and Enzo. I'd be like, Gracie, guess what? We got a job. <laughs> yeah, I do oh, You guys are horrible. And just pretend they've got jobs. We got a job. We got a job. Yeah, we got jobs. We're hairdressers. We got jobs and we're getting paid. Yeah, we're getting paid for it as well. Oh dear, Gracie's fallen for it. And she's worried how not getting a job might make her look to the parents. I think it's definitely I'm going to get eliminated tomorrow because well, just basically what happened today. So everyone's come back with jobs and obviously I didn't go, I stayed here and cleaned. And if that's not annoying her enough, her cleaning has gone completely unnoticed. In fact, the others seem more than happy to trash the house again. <laughs> Later, Gracie, who's worried about being kicked out by the parents tomorrow and peeved that the dumbers have ruined her spring clean, wants to share an idea she has with the group. If we do a rota, like today, I'll clean the toilet. So next time the toilet needs cleaning, if we do a rota, someone else can do okay, it. I don't think, I don't remember no. anyone complaining. No. I just thought it might have been a good idea, but if no one wants to do a rota, then we won't do it. I'm easy, I'm not bothered. Whether we do a rota or not, honestly, no, I'm fine, right. yeah. I'm easy, well, I mean, you do which way we want to do it. It's up to you guys, yeah. you're not stopping you, just saying what I want to do. <laughs> Gracie's idea falls on deaf ears, but undeterred, she carries on the campaign in the garden. I think it's a good idea now, especially now. After. Now I do. Because you just go in and write a rota. If they don't want to be on, on it, then that's their own fault. We just put us on a rota. Because yeah. I'm up for a rota. Yeah. You're up for that, yeah? Right, okay. Right, I've cool. got a good strategy for a rota. Right, cool. need is a pack. <laughs> Gracie wins them over, and now all they have to do is tell the main objectors, Tom and Jack. And um, basically, we were just outside, and we just thought, do you know what, we might as well just do a rotor. 
Oh my god. God, that is gobsmacked. We are fucking that is gobsmacked. That is a dick. The yeah, thing is, you said you didn't want to be involved in a row, and we just think it'd be better. That's because we don't want to be at. No, we don't want it anyway. No. You guys are clearly capable of making yeah, decisions. Yeah. You know, as on, with, with just you guys. I don't want this to cause a divide or tension or anything. Do you know what? That's I mean? what's happened. But really, I don't care. Always so diplomatic, Jack. Everyone here could do more work if they wanted to. I mean, let's say, OK, well done, Gracie, for doing this today, but we went out to find jobs really today and you stayed here, and I'm really, just, the two bedrooms upstairs were still a shit hole when I we got back. Did, did you see down here what down there was like? Did you see what down there was like? It was fucking disgusting. Behind those sofas were disgusting, full of dust. All the stairs had silly string on them and full of dust. Do you know what I mean? Enzo, you can vouch for me here. We fucking clean this place. I know how they've got to keep bouncing off yeah. each other all fine. Yeah. Two people don't want to do a rotor and five people do. That ain't teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork's when we all say, we'll all pull together and do the jobs we want to like do. Been and like I said a million times, it's a democracy. It's about negotiating who's going to do what, when. Sounds almost like a rotor. With the elimination tomorrow and tensions running high, the group are now divided all over a cleaning rotor. Well, you know, it's five of them, two of us, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's mm -hmm. numbered. Let's face it, no one wants to go on Sunday. No, everyone's just looking at the cameras and shit. Yeah. It's fucking yeah. bullshit. Yeah. I have to think about that. I'll be quite happy if I go tomorrow. I'm not walking, so I'm better than that. If I get Enzo has overheard the boys yeah. slacking yeah. everyone off. You said five of us. I think everyone's sucking up. Yeah. Alright, listen, yeah. If you want to say something in a roundabout way about me, yeah. just say it to my face. Well, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying it to you now. I'm not saying it going to the bathroom way, so. Do you know what I mean? Everyone could be said it like you're back. Either, but I, I well, if someone's too much of a pussy to say something in someone's face and say well, something I'm pussy, right? Honestly, and so I'm actually talking to you face to face, yeah. right? Knowing their parents are watching, you'd think that they'd be trying to prove that they can live together like adults. But instead, they indulge in their favourite hobby, arguing. Don't you think it's wimpy, weak, child, childish to talk and bitch about someone behind their back yeah, rather you, than being afraid to down. come and say it to someone's face? You're yeah, better dead. It's all about a rotor, OK? And that's how it started. You know what? Fuck the rotor, OK? I ain't give a shit. Just... I don't know, living in this close proximity to people that you obviously haven't known for so long and everything, it's hard, you know? So something stupid like this, maybe it was a straw that broke the camel's back, you know? I think that's the same. It's either a camel or a donkey, I'm not too sure. Well, it's definitely us first them now. We're just going to move back up here. I'm saying if it should go tomorrow, I think it'll be one of us and I am adamant. It, it will definitely be one of us. Mm. And all because neither of them would pick up a duster. Not wanting to be defeated, Enzo decides he wants to stick it out and see what happens in tomorrow's elimination. I know I've said that I want to leave and everything and I want to go. Um, obviously, I haven't because in the back of my mind, no matter how many times I deny it, it would feel like I've quit, so I'd rather be open to elimination than just quitting. I don't want to quit. The next morning, unaware of the mayhem the night before, the parents arrive to assess the kids' behaviour across the whole week. They have to decide who's put in the least effort and deserves to go home. To help them, they'll get to see what their darling offspring have been up to. It doesn't start well, with disappointment all round that their little angels have upset the neighbours. <laughs> they should have called it a night when the neighbours came round. Actually, not one of them actually said sorry to the neighbour. None of them said, we're really sorry. I just thought they had any, like, spoiled brats, yeah, every one of them. And watching them at work, it's hard for the parents to ignore that Ruby Joe fell to pieces. Everyone else is dead fast and... Don't listen, shouting. whatever you do, don't get upset. Now, don't no, worry I about don't it. don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know you don't. That's why it's hard. I was surprised at um, how Ruby reacted on there because she never cries, and especially in public. But she doesn't like to be beaten, so I think she realised she had to like, pull her socks up and carry on. But is Jack's mum prepared to acknowledge how work-shy her son is? 
That ain't good, is it? If that was a Christmas present, you'd throw it back at your mum, wouldn't you? But I wouldn't get fish for Christmas. I couldn't work this time. I, I should be out with my friends. It's ten past four in the morning, or I should be in bed with someone. Oh, I can't believe it. I thought I'd feel ashamed, cos he had no go in him at all. As he said, he'd rather be in bed with someone. But <laughs> best of luck to him. With that attitude, I think he's going to struggle there as well. But Jade shocks them all with her proactive approach. I thought Jade was quite attentive. I just I couldn't did. believe yeah. that was the same girl that we watched last week. I think she did do really good, being as she had no sleep. Cos <laughs> she's a monster when <laughs> she's had no sleep. A bit of tape on there, make sure that the ticket... These parents have spent years making excuses for their kids, and Ryan's mum is no exception. Look, lively. We're going to be quick to work with me. Right, back in the bag. Label stuck on, on the blow. What? Like, no, I've got a phobia. If you put the name on, I'll put them off. My, my son's got a, a crab phobia. Didn't like him going in a bit of a strap, but... Yeah, but he went back and he, he finished off what he was supposed to be doing. I don't think he was that hard on him. Because I think the trouble is, if we expect youngsters nowadays to be wrapped up in cotton wool, this is exactly what we're going to end up with. Because Enzo did well at work and also thought about leaving, some of the parents wonder how much he needs this experience compared to the others. And I don't think there's anything that I've learned in this week that I'm going to learn any more. I don't see that. When I saw Enzo saying that he would like to leave the house, you know, it's a, it, it's a shame, but... You know, and the others have still got quite a way to go, I think. He's in a house full of people that he can clearly see are probably worse than him in reality, and I'm not proud to admit that my son is definitely one of those. But he's in a house and he's probably... It's a bit of a wake-up call, actually. Yeah, I'm nowhere near bad. as bad as these guys. I thought the idea of, the, of this was to actually eliminate the ones which weren't really pulling their weight. After seeing all the evidence, they now have to come up with the final decision on who should be in the bottom three. But just like their kids, Jack and Enzo's folks are not seeing eye to eye. I say Enzo because if he, if he don't go today, he might walk out tomorrow and somebody else has gone today. OK, I'm being honest with you. Yeah. OK? And I'm saying that your son, as far as I'm concerned, hasn't improved at all. That's that your prerogative, isn't it? But surely, after seeing your son the way he acted, wouldn't you get him out now? Why shouldn't you have a chance? A chance for what? Tell me that. Well, to learn. <laughs> to live with other people, cos he's never done it before. He's never lived away from home. No, it's my son. I'm A. Oh, bet you haven't. After long discussions, they eventually agree on a final three. Back at the house, and the kids are starting to feel the nerves. It's just horrible. I don't think it's an obvious choice this time, that's why. It's not an obvious. No, it's really hard. <laughs> I think today it could be... It could actually be anyone. The seven remaining young dumbers have no idea whose parents will be walking through those doors. The decision is that Jack, Ruby Joe and Enzo are the three that least deserve to stay. But only one of them will be sent packing. OK, we're here, cos you three are in the bottom three. The rest of you set off and have fun. While the bottom three await their fate, the rest of the group sit tight upstairs to find out who will be leaving. I think I should have been there instead of Ruby. I think I should definitely have been there instead of Ruby. I think both you should have been there instead of Ruby. I think, I, think I should have been there instead of Ruby, yeah. The reason you were in the bottom three this week, Ruby Joe, it was to do with the work placement at the fish market. A lot of the parents thought that you maybe could have tried a little bit harder, but they all said you did then turn it around and you did get the job done. You were terrible on that fish one. OK. Absolutely awful. You didn't even try, Jack, did you? You just got to buck yourself up, Jack. The reason why you're in a bottom three is because the other parents fell fret. Because, as they said themselves, that you've done so much better than the others. We didn't just put him in the bottom three because of that. It was also because we were shown that clip that Enzo wanted to leave as well. Mm -hmm. The time has come for the parents to deliver their verdict. It's Enzo going. Usually it's the person who's behaved the worst and put in the least effort that's kicked out. But despite doing well, Enzo came close to walking, so the parents decide it should be him that goes. 
that I'm really pleased with you up to now. I am. It was just that task that we saw. I, um, I didn't think it was that bad. You know what it weren't the fish I was bothered about? It was just the kilograms and stuff. And the I know. I know that. I know. OK. <sighs> OK. Bye. Um... Jack, you've got to buck yourself up yeah. now because I felt a bit ashamed earlier. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm but I sorry. did. I'm sat I there know. and it's embarrassing. I know. It's just the guys I was working with were, like, annoying. But I know, I know. Jack, I know. you've got to buck your ideals up. Otherwise, so you're not, not going to get anywhere. All, all right, right, then. All right. Take care. I love you. And you, love, all right? All right, that's cool. All right. Take care, love. <laughs> 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 I'm feeling happy that I'm coming home because... I do feel like I've learned so much, and I think it's the best time. I don't think there's much else I can learn in here, and I just want to get started with my life. So, Enzo is the second person to be given the boot. Will it inspire him to start standing on his own two feet, or will he be forever young, dumb, and living off mum? Next time, the gang go into the restaurant business. There you go. No, no, because no, I'm meant to be head chef. <laughs> and things get steamy in the kitchen. <laughs> the pressure starts to hit home. Oh, grab anything that's not ours and just trash it. This is who we are. I we can't help the way I am. And for two, it's pack your bags time. We're going home because we can't live with animals. And that's all new and coming up next Sunday at nine. So it may be the end of the weekend, but we're going out with a laugh. So stay put for your Family Guy double next. Then one visit to Langley Falls is never enough. So we're with the Smiths for a couple of classics from 10.45. And later, if you haven't seen the start of our brand new comedy, you are in for a treat. Back to back Wilfred from 11.30. Ah, your children. They're cute, they say funny things. Then, before you know it, they're all grown up and ready to fly the nest, starting a life of their own. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. Stop acting like a spoiled brat! Well, they are a spoiled brat! In these recession-riddled times, it's harder than ever for young people to get a job. So what chance do these reprobates have of standing on their own two feet? <laughs> This lot are selfish. You give me money, so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Sponging. Give me a change. Lazy. You don't earn that yet, have you? Jack, I've just earned it. And completely useless. I don't know how to use the washing machine, the microwave, the dryer. So I can lick my elbow. Their parents are sick and tired of waiting for them to grow up and move out. But they have only got themselves to blame. Grace has been one of my biggest mistakes in life. I'm ashamed of myself, really. And I've kind of reached a point where I can't do it anymore. So they're finally kicking them out and forcing them to run their own home. Not one bit of food in the house. No, so we've got our sheets, pillows, oh my everything. God. I know this isn't prison, but they're doing better off in there than we are here. They're going to be made to get jobs like the rest of us. When you finish socialising, you want to do some work. Yeah. Let me know when it's convenient for you, you know what I mean? I've never seen such a negative group, it's just such a negative attitude. Okay. No, no, because I'm meant to be head chef. <laughs> it kind of makes you despair for humanity sometimes, seeing people like this. It's all under the watchful gaze of their own parents, who will judge their progress. <laughs> I just thought they were acting like spoiled brats, every one of them. And each week, the most useless gets the boot. <laughs> At stake, the prize of a round-the-world trip. <laughs> Will a month of independent living finally make them grow up? We can't live with animals. This is who we are! <laughs> Mac in the face. Oh. I ate that. <laughs> I didn't realise how hard it was going to be. Or will they remain young, dumb, and living off mum? Last week, our eight young dumbers moved in together with the aim of proving to their parents they could live like responsible animals. Amazingly, it turned out they couldn't. Someone help me, please. 
Instead, they spent the week drinking, wrecking their new home, and rowing. Don't fucking dare hit all none of us like you, so fuck off before I smack in the face. Oh, go on then, you stupid bitch. Oh, I hate her. And things didn't get any better when they officially went to work for the first time ever at a youth hostel. It started badly this one this and went down the pan from there. Girls, one toilet's going to take this long, we're not going to get anything done. <laughs> Do you really think the fact that you couldn't make 30 sandwiches between two of you was a laughing matter? <laughs> Keep laughing, boys, we're cleaning up, yeah. okay? Watching everything unfold is their parents. It's their job to decide who least deserves to stay each week. And after failing to impress at work, as well as upsetting everyone with controversial opinions... Like, I literally am totally against, like, two guys having a kid. Like, every okay, single kid needs my life. I am totally against it. It was 18-year-old pampered daddy's girl Sophie who got the boot. I'm planning around the world trip myself. I just need to go, Daddy, <laughs> please, and I'll get it. And then there were seven. 20-year-old no-nonsense Gracie. I don't get on with girls because girls are bitches. Jack, the ladies' man, who's 19. Right, three step back, just over 50 girls, so it's not too many. It'd be an achievement to go out not to get a girl. I honestly think that would be more of an achievement. Princess Jade, who's 18. I told you where they were! I yeah, told I you exactly what the one! I don't care, Mum! <laughs> Deep thinker, 19-year-old Tom. I would love to be reincarnated as a cat. Play around, sleep, eat food. What's not to love about that? Ruby Jo, the hell-raising party girl who's 18. If I don't get me own way, I'll hell break loose. Stop acting like a spoiled brat! Well, I'm a spoiled brat! 18-year-old Ryan, who's a budding economist. They complain that there's a limited amount of money, so why don't they just think more of us and just give it to everyone, and then everyone can be rich and make themselves pretty. And 20-year-old mummy's boy, Enzo. I am spoiled. Um, I'm wrapped up in cotton wool. I'm not going to move out to get independence. I've got independence now, so I'm right, right here. Counting. So far, this lot have shown no desire to grow up and start acting their age. But will some good old-fashioned hard work in a fish market be the kick up the backside they so desperately need? Don't get it. Back in the bag. Label stuck on. On the blow. Take it away. No. It's unlikely. It's approaching the end of day four, and delighted with the departure of opinionated Sophie, the group are pulling out the stops to prepare a celebratory meal. I've never cooked a fry up before, but I did, um, I did bacon sandwiches yesterday, so I'll, I'll learn how to cook them. Using classic young, dumb ingenuity, dinner is served. Um, it's the back of a cornflakes uh, box, because all the plates are in the dishwasher, so that was my uh, dinner. No night is complete without an alcoholic beverage. But with their weekly budget all spent, they haven't got any. So Ruby, Joe and Ryan revert to their natural survival instincts. No fags, no beer or anything, no money in the house, so we thought we might as well try our luck with asking for an IOU from the shop. So, so she, she's boosted herself up, yeah. we're, we're, we're wearing a nice jacket. Everyone said a jacket. bit of cleavage, it might help, so... Yep. Check. Gonna, gonna flash a bit of boob. Well, the thing is, we've ran out of money, so I was wondering, right, because we get our, we get our m weekly money tomorrow, mm -hmm. if we could just have some cigarettes till tomorrow and we bring the money back. Could we be really okay, cheeky, right? Could we be really cheeky and have a, a small bottle of vodka till tomorrow as well? Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. Bye. Thank you for I can't wait to go to Animal. Let's go to Animal. Yeah. Wait. And then I got 25. And I'm all back in. This is like the best day ever. Like, we get vodka <laughs> and fags. <laughs> so feeling. It's like, do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> could, could we have asked for a better day? It's late, and tomorrow they'll find out what their next work assignment is. And in this hopeless household, what better way to prepare than to get out the makeup and pretend to be cats? I actually look like the leopard. <laughs> 
After hours of role play, drinking, and shouting, it's no surprise their attention seeking behavior has attracted attention. There's no one there. Funnily enough, a disgruntled neighbor tells them to keep the noise down. Duh, who's that? <laughs> oh, we've got loads of viewers. Look, there's people looking everywhere. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is ah! You know what? They all rage to get up. <laughs> it's a fair request at midnight. Anyone reasonable would understand. Just a shame there's no one reasonable living in the house. It's morning, and while most of the kids are getting used to life in the young dumb house... I love it here. It's been well good. Mummy's boy Enzo has awoken feeling homesick. Really homesick. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be for me. <laughs> Just to leave my family. Understandable when you consider he's been away for almost a full week now. I'm coming home. 20-year-old Enzo has rarely left the comfort blanket of home. The longest period of time I've ever been away from my parents was when I went to New York with my brother, and I think that was for four to five days. And why would he want to when his doting mum does everything for him, much to the annoyance of his father? I still call him a spoiled little brat, and I think that he really should wake up to reality. If waking up to reality involves a bit of self-indulgent boo-hooing, then this experience has been a huge success. I feel so far away from home because I don't know where I am. And nothing around here is familiar to me. There, there, Enzo. There's no need to suffer alone. Unaware of Enzo's distress, the rest of the gang get ready for the weekly household shop. After Ruby Joe has a shave, obviously. There's nothing in the house. We virtually have got water. That is actually we've got no soups, no cereal, no milk, no bread. Uh, yeah, so we need our money. We've only got water. I don't think we need squash now. During their time in the house, they will be given the same as everyone else their age on job seekers' allowance. Just over seven pounds a day each. We're ready to go shopping. Right, come on, let's go. After Ruby Joe has paid off her IOU from the night before, they all head to the supermarket to buy some household essentials. You getting fruit and veg or not? Nah. With fruit and veg off the menu, maybe they'll stock up on food they can cook from scratch. Or maybe not. Meal for five pounds. Sausage rolls, one fifty-nine. I'm not really keen on the idea of mushrooms. So, what are they going to buy then? I love crisps. I don't really eat anything else apart from crisps. That's why I've always got ulcers and my tongue's always swollen. Yeah, that's the price you pay, Ruby Joe. Transformers, Doritos, Quavers, Watsits, Walkers, Cheesy Puffs, Cheesy Curls, Squares, Monster Munch, Salted Fries for five pounds. We've got 42 bags of crisps, so it should last a little while. Yes, that lot should keep Ruby Joe happy for almost an hour. Um, we've got a bottle of Sainsbury's Triple Distilled Vodka, and it's £20.18, and it's got 56.3 um, units. For Gracie, it's all about the simple pleasures. A pot noodle, cos I wanted to treat myself. <laughs> £69.89. But will spending £70 on what is essentially crisps and vodka impress the parents? Basically, um, I was really bored at first, like, should I say boring? But as we went along and we got to the alcohol part, I kind of got really excited and then after that I liked shopping. So I've changed my mind on shopping now. Shopping rock. I think we're going to be living off pasta, noodles, <laughs> Um, sausage rolls, but it's all right, we've got this to keep us company. The young dumb total health and wellness diet starts here. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't kill them, because tomorrow morning, the group will be thrown into the world of work for the second time. Whoever's the most useless will be sent packing.
And it's their very own parents who will be watching and deciding who goes. Because I was disappointed in her today. I thought she could have done a lot better. During this experience, the kid who's grown up the most and proven they can live independently will win a round-the-world trip. The parents take it in turns to pick a job for their big babies. This week, Ryan's mum, Natasha, is setting the challenge. I do worry for Ryan because, you know, obviously he doesn't work. He's 18 now, he's, you know, he's getting older, you know, next he's going to be in his 20s and then 30s and I think... You know, in his 30s, is he still going to be living at home? Having worked all her life, she knows that getting a job is an important part of growing up, something her son has failed to grasp yet. Hi, guys. It's Natasha here. Hey. Hey. I've spent majority of my working life as part of the cleaning team, which has meant I've spent years learning how to clean the toilets and make sure the toilets are clean. So I think it's about time you guys did the same for a change. Your mum's nice, though. Tomorrow, you will be working with... News of the job sparks a lively fish themed debate. I think if someone came up to me like, could I have a mackerel and end up giving them a card or something? I don't know, they all look the Probably. same. I like tuna, but I've never seen it, like, without being in a tin. Oh, yeah, no tuna. It's wow. like that shape. Tuna fish. Square. The word fish in the sea are crabs. I'm scared of them. They've got all those pointy legs and little twiggy things. And... But fact of the day goes to Gracie. Do you know that if you dip a crab in a beer, then they walk straight? If you, if you, you really do learn something new every day. That's weird. They'll be leaving for their task in a matter of hours. So naturally, our young dummers concentrate on two very important things. Vodka and dancing. Because we planned to get drunk before we knew what our, our, place, like our work placement was, that we all didn't want to not get drunk because we was all in the mood to get drunk. I think this is the drunkest everyone's been together because usually there's like half the people drunk, half the people sober, or you know, opposite way around, like half the people sober and half the people drunk. <laughs> Still homesick, Enzo. We should do the choreography for Pussy Guy Oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at Ruby Jack! The Young Dumb Fame Academy continues until the booze runs out and wears off. And it's a good job it does because their shift at the fish market starts very soon. I'm shattered. I'm so tired. It's about one o'clock in the morning. And we've got to leave to go to work. It's not the dream, that's for sure. It's 2 a.m. at Billingsgate Market in East London and the start of a long night's work. The gang will be split into three groups. Gracie and Tom, Jack, Ryan and Jade, and Enzo and Ruby Joe. First, they must get to know the fish and set up their stalls. Second, they must serve and take orders from customers and local businesses. Come on, Ryan. Finally, they'll prepare an order and hand deliver it to a location in London. The parents will be watching everything they do later in the week, so they need to show they're up to the job. With no sleep, how will they cope with the pressure of working in a busy fish market? Good morning and welcome to Billingsgate. I'm Lee, this is Roger and this is Russell. We're going to be your mentors for the day. Today you're here at one of the largest inland fish markets around. And we need you to be on the ball today. Hope you're all up for it, hope you're ready for it. 90% of life is common sense. So you've got to move your arse and you've got to show me plenty of common sense. Billingsgate is 